Mr. Chairman and uh, dear participants, it's a really great pleasure for me to join the seventh annual meeting of the Serbian Neurosurgical Society. And I also cordially thank the organizing committee for their kind invitation. So when we are dealing with thalamic tumors with different shapes, different types, and different parts of the thalamus, uh, we have to know that they constitute around three to four percent of all pediatric brain tumors. But if you go over the literature, I was able to find only 11 papers within the last 25 years with reasonable number of cases and with detailed analysis of this series. When we do surgery in this particular part of the brain, we should have a good knowledge about the anatomy of the lesion. We have important connections of the thalamus, which we call as peduncles, the anterior thalamic peduncle, the superior thalamic peduncle, posterior and inferior. During our approaches, we have to keep in mind these structures. When it comes to the vascular supply, there are five different arterial supplies of the region, whereas the whole venous drainage is through the galenic venous system. So it's important for the posterior approaches. The predilection of the lesions are mostly superior anterior region and the pulvinar thalami area. The growth pattern of these lesions are well described by Dr. Yashargil. We have mainly three group of tumors, those with local expansion or tumors presenting expansion well, beyond the thalamus into surrounding white matter or those expanding into the lateral ventricular cavity without an ependymal penetration. The signs and symptoms are summarized on this slide. They either present with increased ICP, motor deficits, visual dysfunction, movement disorders, speech problems, spasticity, occasionally with seizures. Short duration of symptoms is often indicative of a malignant lesion. And as described previously well, by Dr. Boop, extension beyond addition structures goes so into the peduncle the are another group yeah. of tumors. Now, from the neurosurgeon's standpoint, all thalamic tumors should be verified histologically. In patients with low-grade tumors, radical removal of the tumor has to be the goal of the treatment. Since we know very well, the long-term prognosis depends on the extent of resection. But high-grade lesions should be also biopsied. Surgical resection may be challenging because of the complex vascular supply, deep-seated location, and the proximity of eloquent structures such as as internal capsule and the basal ganglia. Besides the routine stopatological evaluation, we always send a significant amount of tissue for the NGS panel to have an idea about the mutations, the fusions and copy number variations of these lesions, because it's very important as mentioned before for a targeted chemotherapy protocol. Mainly, we have four major uh, approach directions, either transcortical, transventricular, or interhemispheric, transcallosal, posterior interhemispheric, or transsylvian, transinsular. So since most of these lesions in pediatric age group are benign lesions, we have the tendency to perform a radical resection. To do that, we have to study the axial, coronal, and sagittal views of the MRI carefully to have an idea where the origin of the tumor is and to which uh, direction the extension of the lesion is. So I will go over these approaches. The transcortical approach was described from frontal part of the brain, occipital or transtemporal. So it has an easy access to the lesion, less chance of injuring the arteries and draining veins, but the disadvantage is that you may disrupt a large amount of cortex, especially when the patient has no hydrocephalus and big in size. Therefore, we always prefer a sulcal approach in order to diminish the disrupted cortical parenchyme. This is an example on T2-weighted images. You see a well-circumscribed lesion 
presenting with midline shift, heterogeneous contrast enhancement. So a transcortical, in fact, transulcal approach was used. This is the early postoperative CT scan and the day after we always perform an MRI to have an idea about the extent of our resection and the, on the coronal sections, you can see that we have used the superior temporal sulcus to get to the tumor area. The second approach, which may be used, is the interhemispheric transcalosal approach, especially if major portion of the tumor protrudes into the lateral ventricle, as you can see on this slide. The advantage, we don't have to perform a cortical incision, no disruption of hemispheric tissue. Again, a big well-circumscribed lesion presenting with midline shift, heterogeneous contrast enhancement, which is very typical with a low-grade glioma. We do a very short allosotomy. The, our landmark as the choroid plexus to prevent accumulation of blood and the occipital horn. We always put a small piece of cotonoid, a tiny incision on the brain parenchyme, and immediately after that, you face with the tumor. Always a frozen section is performed, and then you can proceed with routine dissection between the tumor and the normal tissue. And you can proceed with ultrasonic aspirator with a typical microsurgical approach till we get to the bottom of this lesion. And these are the early postoperative scans of the patient. And you can use the interhemispheric transcalosal approach even for these small size lesions, which came out as an anaplastic astrocytoma. And these are the early postoperative MRI scans. And after adjuvant treatment, postoperative five years uh, MRI are tumor free. The third approach will be the posterior interhemispheric, either parasplenial or transplenial, depending on the location of the tumor. On the left side, the tumor has protruded into the lateral ventricle. Then we decide for a parasplenial uh, approach like this. But on those patients here, you have to uh, go through the splenium of corpus callosum. It is Nice approach for pulvinar thalami lesions. A case like this, again, well circumscribed lesion, which can be approached easily from the posterior side. Always we do a DTI study to have an idea about the important corticospinal tracts. They are pushed anteriorly mostly, and then you can use this uh, parasplenial approach easily to get this low-grade glioma out. And for this particular case, which is a midline localized pulvinar thalami lesion, you have to go through the splenium of corpus callosum. This is how we do a small opening. Then you have to see the edge of the tentorium, identify vein of Rosenthal, Okay, after minor dissection, opening of the cistern, here you can see the venum of corpus callosum. Okay, after resection, you can face with the lesion and with ultrasonic aspirator, this lesion can be dissolved with routine microsurgical methods on the 
left side, you can see the preoperative studies. These are the intraoperative MRI pictures to be sure that we take the whole lesion out. And these are the early postoperative control studies. The pathology was pyelocytic astrocytoma. For lesions not suitable to reach with the previous approaches and those very close to insular or uh, cortex, you can use the transsylvian transinsular approach. To do that, we have to open the sylvian fissure widely to identify the long uh, gyria of insular cortex. And in between, you can enter into the thalamic area. And this is one of the cases where we use this particular approach, you see this distance is enough to get into the tumor area. And these are the post-operative studies. And the patient has no neurological deficit. So the extent of resection depends, of course, to a good preoperative radiological evaluation, good microsurgical technology, and I have to emphasize also having the intraoperative MRI. So we are using the last 16 years, the three Tesla uh, shared room design intraoperative MRI. And within 12 minutes, you can have all the sequences ready, which are really uh, enough for you to, to get an idea about the extent of your resection. An example, in huge thalamic lesion, presenting with hydrocephalus. We did the surgery. We thought we get the whole tumor out and you can see the big lump, which was a residual lesion. So intraoperative MRI, this is the tumor. Postoperative, we were able to achieve a gross total resection. This was our publication from 2009. And now we had the chance to do intraoperative MRI evaluation in 44 low-grade gliomas of thalamus. At the first look, we had a gross total resection in 58% of the cases. On those subtotal resection cases, they were 18. In 16, we were able to achieve a total resection and we were able to document that in a second look. At the end of the day, 82% gross total resection of thalamic low-grade gliomas was accomplished. So when we look to the pathology of these cases in the literature, as I mentioned, low-grade gliomas constitute around 60 to 70% of the cases. And it's also the fact in our cases. Right now, we have 84 pediatric thalamic cases and as I mentioned, 65% of them are low-grade gliomas. What about the morbidity? Literature report is between 0 to 19%, and the mortality of thalamic tumor resection is between 0 to 2%. And this is our complications, 14% of the cases. In two of them, we had hemiparesis, subdural fluid collections in nine cases, they are all transcalosal cases. Now we know how to deal with this problem. And in three cases, we had seizures, so they had to use anti-epileptic drugs. The prognostic factors of thalamic pediatric tumors was described nicely by Paris group from Necker and Femme Malade. So those patients with symptom duration longer than two months, tumor volume less than 30 milliliters, lesions with low-grade histological features, and tumor excision greater than 90% at surgery is a good prognostic criteria. So this is right now our algorithm with low-grade pediatric thalamic lesions, definitely surgery, total resection, we just observe the patient. In subtotal resected cases, either you may proceed with a second surgery or with chemotherapy, but if we have documentation of disease progression, again, it depends on the time interval, but we may proceed with a second surgery or chemo or chemo plus radiation. Those patients presenting with malignant tumor, they should be biopsied and depending on the pathology and the molecular evaluation, you can proceed with targeted chemotherapy.
In summary, thalamic tumors are rare, but they all should be verified histologically. Different surgical approaches are available depending on location of the tumor, and low-grade gliomas can be resected with low mortality and morbidity, and they have favorable outcome. Thank you very much for your attention.